Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video is all about the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro and this thing is a game changer. Now to start this video out, I wanna give you guys a little background on myself and how I actually use these products because I think that's really important in these types of a video. So personally, I'm coming up on 12 years that I've been in the creative field. I got my first MacBook Pro in 2009, which kind of started my journey down this path. In 2011 and 2012, I actually worked in the Apple store. And then these days I do large scale production shoots, whether it be in the streets of New York or LA, doing some pretty high end video work all the way to me working on my personal content here in my home office that is my YouTube channel. So with all that being said, I think it's safe to say that I have a lot of experience using Apple products and especially MacBook Pros. It's always been my personal workhorse and I do use it quite a bit when I'm traveling as well. So I know what I need out of my machine and the M1 MacBook Pro is by far the best MacBook I've ever had. Now some things that I wanna cover in today's video and I will have chapters for all the different sections that we're going to talk about. The first thing is I wanna to talk to you guys about what I actually use this computer for, for my day-to-day -day use. And then I wanna to talk to you guys about the things that I love about this computer, the things that I don't like so much about it, which spoiler, there's not that many things that I don't like. And then I'm gonna to talk to you guys about who I think this computer is great for, and then kind of what I'm hoping Apple does for the next generation of these as well. So I really hope you guys find this video helpful or at least find it enjoyable to watch. And if you do, be sure to drop it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you're new around here. It goes a long way for the channel and I really do notice each and every single one let's go ahead and dive into this long-term review. So I'm sure you guys are going to wonder which model of the 13 inch MacBook Pro I have is. So I have the 13 inch with 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigabytes of storage. So I don't have a ton of storage on it, but honestly I work mostly off of these Samsung drives. So I have like these T7s, I have a bunch of these. Um, and usually I'm working off of drives all the time. Um, I don't really like to store anything locally on my computer. So I always have double backups on external drives. So I really only went with the 500 gigs because I don't need much on the physical computer itself. So let's talk about what I actually use my MacBook Pro for on a day-to-day -day basis. The first one is what I like to call just kind of like admin work. So I use it for a lot of emails, a lot of note taking. I do a whole bunch of stuff with YouTube analytics and responding to comments, things like that. And then one more thing I'll throw in the admin section is just entertainment. So I watch a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of YouTube content, or maybe even, you know, I'll watch a little Netflix if maybe I'm traveling or something like that. And I'll kind of group all of that under the admin work section, which honestly just means light work that pretty much any computer can handle. So the main thing that I use this computer for and hopefully why you guys are clicking on this video is for the creative work and all that type of stuff that I do on this computer. So I do a lot of very high megapixel, large file size photo editing. So you're working with file sizes that are anywhere from like 50 megabytes all the way up to like 80 or 90 megabytes. And if you're talking about dozens or hundreds or even a thousand photos um, that are all that file size, switching between them quickly editing them can become very taxing on your computer very quickly. So yeah, I do a lot of heavy photo editing. Obviously you guys are watching me on a video right now. So I do some high end 4k video editing as well on this computer with some different cameras and file types that honestly are pretty difficult for computers to handle. And then also I do a little bit of design work as well, working on thumbnails, some small logo work, stuff like that. Nothing crazy, but I do use Photoshop in design, things like that as well. So. Yeah, it's safe to say I do a good amount of creative work on this computer and uh, yeah, that's what I mainly use it for. So let's start out with the positive stuff. And I'm sure you guys have heard this first thing on my list before, and that is the fact that the battery life on these M1 MacBooks are just unreal. Now, personally, I'm coming from a 2018 MacBook Pro. That thing was totally specced out. If I was ever doing anything that was taxing, whether it be like photo or video editing, or honestly, even having Google Chrome open, um, that computer would last maybe like an hour, maybe two hours of battery life. And it just wasn't very good. It was an awesome computer, but you had to be close to power a lot of the time. So when I switched over to this M1 MacBook Pro, I mean, it, it's actually crazy. I won't have to charge this computer for sometimes two, maybe three days if I'm just doing light stuff on it. And actually my first week of having this computer, I was on a flight down to Houston, Texas. It was like a two hour flight and I was working on a video while I was flying. It was maybe like an hour and a half of video editing. Um, and my computer went from 100% battery life to 87% battery life. And we're talking like an hour and a half of 4K video editing in Premiere Pro, which isn't optimized. Um, and the battery life on this thing was like hardly even touched. So I like couldn't really believe it. 
And honestly, even just doing normal stuff from day to day, whether it be kind of like the admin stuff that I do, if I'm not doing anything heavy on this computer, it can easily last me multiple days without a charge. And honestly, with the M1 MacBook Pro, uh, the battery life on this thing is seriously amazing. As I've said, I'm coming from the 15 inch MacBook Pro before, and I've actually had a 15 inch since 2009. So I'm not gonna lie, I was a little scared going down to the 13 inch model, um, because let's be honest, size does matter. But I'm actually surprised how much I enjoy the screen size of this computer, and actually just the physical size of the MacBook as well. Because honestly, with the way that I work typically, if I'm doing any type of, I don't know, heavy 4K video editing, most of the time I am docked to my 37 inch ultra wide monitor anyways. So most of the time, if I'm on the go and I'm working just directly off my MacBook, whether I be doing some of the admin side of things or I might be doing some photo editing, which I don't really have a problem doing, you know, just one photo at a time. And this screen size is plenty for my needs on that side of things. And I've actually really kind of learned to enjoy the physical size of this computer, especially with traveling, whether I be in the airport or trying to edit on an airplane or even just simple things like around the house, taking this out to the patio, taking it down stairs, having it on the couch. I thought I was going to hate the size of the 13 inch, but honestly, now that I have this, I don't know if I want to get a 16 inch or something bigger down the road. Now, the next really important thing out of this computer for me is the performance side of things. And I'm not gonna get too nerdy or techy about the M1 chip and all that stuff. I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of content around that, but basically this thing is pretty magical. It is a game changer in the performance side of things. And it really has been awesome for me for all my creative needs. So whether it be that high-end photo editing, whether it be that high-end video editing with some pretty difficult files to handle. I've never had any issues multitasking or have multiple programs open. The only issue I've actually had with performance, which is editing some certain video file types, is actually on Adobe and Premiere. It's not on the Apple side of things. If I edited in Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve instead of Premiere Pro, I actually wouldn't have had any issues at all. So I'm not going to dock the M1 MacBook Pro for any of that stuff. All right, future Johnny here real quick. Of course, as I'm finishing up this video, Adobe finally updated Premiere Pro for the M1 computers and the M1 chip. Now, I personally haven't had a ton of time to test it yet, but it looks like it's already even better. I don't know if it's gonna be as quick as uh, Final Cut and DaVinci yet. I'll have to do some more testing, so stay tuned to the channel for that. And I quote from Adobe, Creative Cloud apps like Premiere Pro run over 80% faster on the M1 Mac compared to an identically configured Intel-based Mac. So take that for what you will. We're gonna have to do some more testing in the future, but it is finally updated, which kind of gets rid of one of my issues with the M1s. So whether you're doing design work, video work, photo work, you can definitely rely on this thing. And it's kind of crazy that this M1 is going to be the baseline. And then we're going to see whatever the next generation of the M1 later on is, whether it be like the M2 or the M1X, whatever they're going to call it. Um, I'm pretty excited to see the performance bump and whatever the next generation of these are. Now, I just briefly mentioned this, but I do want to touch on the price of these computers because they are such a good deal for what you're getting out of it. My specific configuration, the 13 inch, with 16 gigs of RAM, the 512 gigabytes of storage comes out to be $1699, which is honestly a really killer deal um, for the amount of performance you're getting out of this computer. My 15 inch MacBook Pro before that was really specced out, I think was close to three and a half, four grand with all said and done with tax and all that stuff. So the fact that you're getting a smaller package, a more powerful computer um, for less than half the price is just a huge win for everybody. Now, just a couple of smaller features I want to mention that have kind of just made my overall experience with this computer really enjoyable. One is going to be the instant wake. So as soon as you flip open the screen, it just instantly wakes up and you can just get to work immediately. And it's just one of those things you don't really think about, but now that you have it, you really appreciate it. Whenever you use something that doesn't have it, you're like, wow, I never really realized I needed that. Now, just another really nice thing about this computer is the keyboard feels awesome. The keys just feel very tactile and just natural to use. We all know some people weren't a fan of the previous version of the Apple um, keyboard keys, I guess if you wanna call it. Um, it just didn't feel as good, but they've put the best ones back in here again. It feels great to type on, whether I be taking notes or responding to emails, things like that. Um, it's just a pleasure to type on, which 
you know, you're spending a lot of money on a computer. You don't want it to be um, an awful experience whenever you're typing. All right, so that's the things that um, I really enjoy about this computer. Let's take a little uh, drink break, and then we're going to uh, talk about the things that I don't like so much about this computer, which I'm going to be honest with you guys. The list is pretty short for this. We got some Twisted Lime Topo Chico today. Now the first thing, which is honestly a pretty big disappointment for me and definitely does affect my workflow on a day-to-day -day basis, is the fact that these M1 MacBook Pros only have two USB-C ports. Now on the previous versions, even if you got a 13 inch MacBook Pro, you could configure it so you got four USB-C ports, but for whatever reason, maybe in the next generation they'll allow that, but right now, any way you configure this computer, you can only get two USB-C ports, which obviously when I'm doing creative work, whether I'm transferring footage, dumping memory cards, even just having to plug in my computer so I can charge it while I'm doing something else that takes up one of the two ports. And it is kind of a pain. I'm always needing probably at least three, if I'm being honest, and four is just nice to have. And I know there's different dongles and accessories you can get to get some more ports out of it, but I just need more than two ports. It's a pro machine. It should have four ports because uh, anyone that's doing pro level work needs more than two, that's for sure. Now, I think it's clear that I'm a big Apple fan. I love MacBooks and everything like that, but something I just haven't been on board with overall is the touch bar. I'm not someone that loves it and I'm not someone that absolutely hates it. I just personally don't use it. Um, so I would rather just have physical keys. Really the only things I ever use that touch bar for is to control the volume or to adjust the screen brightness. So I'd like to see them at least make that an option where you can choose just physical keys over the touch bar. Um, and give me those four ports as well. And while I'm mentioning ports again, one little thing I'd like to add onto this review to just be kind of a wish list item is to put back the SD card reader on the side of this computer. So many different people use SD cards, whether you be a photographer or a videographer. And obviously these days there's starting to be a lot of different memory cards out there. I feel like that's why Apple honestly took away the SD card because there's all these different CF Expresses and all these different types and things like that. So that an SD card isn't as universal these days Days, but man, it's still by far, I feel like the most used type of memory card. So just be able to give us one of our ports back and just have that SD card reader right in there would just be so easy for on shoot locations or just working here in my office, things like that. So that's a wish list item. It's not something that I don't like about this computer because it hasn't been around for, you know, a couple of years now, but in a dream world, I'd love to have an SD port on the side of this computer again. All right, guys, so that's really it for my thoughts on the M1 MacBook Pro. Like I said, I've been absolutely loving this computer so far, and it's seriously a powerhouse. But who do I think this computer is for? Actually, I think it could be a large array of people, whether you are on the higher performance needs like myself doing creative work, this is gonna be plenty for what you need for doing most stuff, unless you're into the kind of like 3D animation or maybe gaming space, a MacBook just isn't really the right choice for you. But if you're doing like photo, design, video work, uh, this MacBook Pro, this M1 is a really good choice. And then even for people on the total opposite side of things, doing kind of like everyday admin stuff, whether it be emails, note taking, web browsing, that type of stuff, I still would say that you should consider a MacBook Pro. Now, some people might argue, well, it's way more performance than what you need, so save a hundred bucks and get like a MacBook Air or something else. But I would argue that if you get something that's more powerful and higher performance, all that's going to do is just reassure that you're gonna be able to use this computer for many years down the road. So like if I were to buy a MacBook Pro for someone I don't know, like a family member that is just kind of a light computer user, I would still choose a MacBook Pro just because of the longevity that you're gonna get out of it. So looking into the future, I'm pretty excited about the next generation of these computers, uh, whatever they end up being called, the M1X or the M2s, whatever it is. I'm really excited to see what they end up doing with it, maybe the smaller bezels, new colors, hopefully, you know, with the new IMAX and all these vibrant colors, they're gonna add some more colors to the MacBook Pro lineup. Like we all saw the matte black IMAX, those are really cool when they first came out. Um, and I think we're due for some cool colors of like the more pro side of things, whether it be, um, if I could choose anything, I think it'd be the more muted colors like that army green they had in the iPhone or like the blue that they have recently. Give us some cool professional undertone muted colors. Um, and man, I would just be stoked for that. So yeah, hopefully a little bit more power, add some more ports in there, maybe even the SD card slot back in and keep killing it with the battery life. And this might be a perfect computer. So guys, 
I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you found it helpful. Um, I know this is maybe a little bit of a lengthy long-term review, but I just want to kind of give you guys my perspective and I hope um, maybe it's a different take than what you've seen some other reviews out there. So guys, drop me a comment down below if you guys have any questions about anything that I didn't cover in today's video. Let me know what you guys think of this type of a tech review. I'm trying to add some more tech stuff to this channel because honestly it's things that I'm passionate about and I obviously use them on a daily basis. But guys, that's going to be it for me in today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, will you please drop it a thumbs up? If you're new around here, consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next video very, very soon. Peace guys.